Hey scientists, Mr. K here, and today we're gonna take class outside. It's a beautiful day out, but I'm gonna enjoy it by a roaring, well, not necessarily roaring, but definitely a little bit of a toasty fire that we have. Now, this is all going to be shown through OneNote as well, not this video. Well, I guess I could link the video, but I'm gonna go through the notes in OneNote. So as you follow along, fill out your notes in OneNote. But today we're gonna to be talking about chemical and physical changes. And at a fire, we see an excellent example of a chemical change. But a chemical change helps based on physical changes, right? So we have two types of uh, changes matter can undergo. One of them, obviously, a physical change. And that is when a substance um, does not change into other substances. So it changes shape, texture, or state. So an example that we're gonna look at and we'll witness throughout this is I have a beaker of ice, right? So I'm just gonna let this beaker sit right here and we can witness a change throughout this process. I think you'll be able to guess what that is and it's that ice is going to melt. Well, ice is H2O, it's just a solid state of water. But when it melts into a liquid water, right, it's gonna actually become well, well, it's still water, H2O. So we haven't changed the substance. We're just changing the state. So that's a physical change. And a water becoming ice or water vapor is a physical change, even though heat is applied. So the sun coming down, heating the ice or the fire radiating and, and you know heating that ice, it's gonna melt. So that's a physical change. Now a chemical change, that next one, is when a substance reacts and forms something new, right? So reactions, they break up larger molecules or they combine their atoms in new ways. So when I have this fire here, I am actually breaking apart the atoms of the wood, which is mostly made up of carbon, right? And we can look at different types of chemical changes. Some of them are burning. Burning is an excellent example of a chemical change. Another is rusting. Well, rusting, I can look at here because I have a piece of iron, right? And bring this a little bit closer so you can see All right so we have iron and this railroad tie has rusted and i can't undo that right this iron has rusted it's uh, uh, oxidized and now it is something new it's rust right and cooking oh well cooking and baking kind of goes very similar uh you know hand in hand and so since we are by a fire let's you know talk about that a little bit more so. So I've got, you know, my, you know, some more stick and I've got a marshmallow. Well, if I took a, you know, if I took a bite of that marshmallow, I've like torn it, right? I still have marshmallow, but as I chew it up, I'm breaking it up into smaller pieces and then I consume it. So I've actually now creating a chemical change because my body is digesting it. Well, if I take this marshmallow and let's put it on here, this is a massive marshmallow. So I'm gonna, you know, slowly bake, you know, cook this mellow, right? But if I were to prep the s'more a little bit, let's prep that, let's let that set right there for just a little bit here so I can keep on going. But if I'm gonna prep my s'more, I have my piece of chocolate, one big piece of chocolate, but if I break it in half, right? I still have two pieces of chocolate, right? So I've just created a physical change. I haven't changed anything with these, but I have, and the same thing with my graham cracker, is if I broke my graham cracker in two, I still have graham cracker. I haven't changed the substance, so it's simply a physical change, right? So we'll let this sit here for just a little bit, and we'll let our marshmallow cook. Now, another example of a physical change would be if I have, you know, some, you know, kind of paper, right? And if I tear this paper, I still have paper. I haven't changed anything here. Now, once I start burning said paper, right? If I were to take this paper and I put it in the fire, right? I then have a chemical change that's occurring where I have ash, right? And this ash is a new substance, right? I'm burning it, right? And I have created something new, ash. It's burned. I can't undo chemical changes very well at all, right? So uh, the starting material of a reaction is called a reactant. The substance created by the reaction are called the products. So the paper in this is my reactant and the ash, and it's also releasing gases, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Those are the products of this chemical reaction. So physical changes are often easier 
to reverse than chemical changes. So my ice that I am melting here, right? There's already some water that's being created, right? I can put that back in a freezer and I can freeze this ice or this water now back into ice cubes. It's very difficult to change a chemical change, right? So as I am cooking my marshmallow over my fire here, it's, you know, slowly cooking, um, but I can't undo that cooking process on the marshmallow. Right? So let's keep on going through our notes. And so we have chemical reactions. Um, so baking soda and lemon juice, they react to form carbon dioxide. Well, our reactants, right? The things that we start with, baking soda and lemon juice. But when I put them together, they then release carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide is the product that is formed, right? So the next one, water and oxygen form when hydrogen peroxide molecules break apart and combine in a new way. So if I have my reactants, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and I then they break apart forming uh, two different things, water and oxygen, right? Uh, so that's kind of like if you have hydrogen peroxide, you put it on something and it bubbles up, it's releasing some oxygen, right? And then magnesium, which is a metal, it burns when there's oxygen present, right? So magnesium plus oxygen, those are my reactants. The product that is, is magnesium oxide. So they combine and they form something new. So what happens during a chemical reaction? Well, we're witness witnessing it right here. So we have chemical changes that take place when bonds break or the atoms rearrange. And the atoms bond together, they form something new. So if I were cooking my marshmallow here, I am rearranging those atoms in it and they cook, they are creating something new. And I get a nice toasty outside to it or if I am you know, cooking food, you know, chicken or uh, fish, it actually, because you don't wanna eat chicken or fish raw, but once you cook it, it's, you know, it's safe, it's fine. So you've cooked and you've created something new. You've rearranged the atoms, they've changed through that chemical process. So an example, an easier one, is water at liquid, is liquid at room temperature, but oxygen and hydrogen are gases at room temperature. Same thing kind of like with salt. Uh, if we were to take sodium and chlorine, the two of those by themselves, like we talked about before, they're toxic, right? They're poisonous. But when I put them together, I form something new, which is table salt, and that is totally fine to consume. So how is energy involved in chemical changes? Well, some chemical changes need energy, thermal energy, like this fire is heat, right? So they begin, so in the reaction, energy is a reactant. So an example would be you need heat to bake uh, bread uh, all the way through, just like I need heat to cook my s'more, right? Energy can be released quickly or slowly and can be in the form of heat or light. Right? So we talked about our plasma and that when we take the gas and we run a chemical or a electric current going through it, right? It omits plasma, which is energy, that light, right? And so chemical reactions between wood and a campfire, like this one, and oxygen in the air. This is thermal energy. Now chemicals in a glow stick, right? That is not uh, like what we talked about with plasma, right? glow sticks are actually chemical reactions. When you break that little stick, right, you are releasing a chemical in a little uh, container in a plastic or, you know, in a plastic tube inside that stick, and it mixes with the other chemical in that uh, uh, glow stick, and then they omit light, right? So when things omit light, we are seeing a chemical change, right? Um, now, fire is a chemical change, and it emits light as well. If you were to uh, have a candle, it emits light. Um, so chemicals and a glow stick combine to release energy, form light. Light energy can also create chemical changes, right? So colored objects left in sunlight become faded. If you've ever noticed how uh, uh, you know, paint on a house, uh, it becomes faded. It lightens up over time because the sun, that light energy is affecting it, right? Uh, in my classroom, uh, I have letters on my bulletin board, and if I remove those letters, and you'll see an example of that later on, is uh, that I took a picture from before, 
but the paper on my bulletin board, it appears black. But when I remove those yellow letters, I actually can see a much more darker black behind it because the light in the classroom has actually faded the black paper uh, outside of those yellow letters, but the yellow letters have actually protected it. And that's why we see uh, the darker color, which is another reason why you should wear sunscreen outside because the sun is creating a chemical change to your skin. And that's why you could uh, burn or you, I mean, you tan, but then you could burn actually because of the, the ultraviolet light um, or those UV rays. So light is important for plants. So the grass around me, right? The trees that are growing, they need light and they use light for a chemical change called photosynthesis, right? And so that light energy is used to produce glucose and sugars for the plant to, to continue to grow. And they store that uh, glucose and those sugars for food for itself, but then also inside of it, which is how you get energy when you eat plants, when you eat lettuce or carrots or apples is that uh, that tree has produced a fruit or if you eat lettuce that you uh, are gaining energy from it or why you know birds or animals like cows eat grass they get energy from it there's energy stored there so how does chemical change affect the mass involved well burning wood the mass of the ash left over plus the gases in the smoke is going to be equal to the original mass of the wood so with my fire here, if I were to have taken the mass of all the wood before I put it, I put it in the fire, and it you know equaled a hundred grams, right? Now obviously that's not a crazy amount, but let's say I make that a nice easy number to work with. But I have a hundred grams of wood. After I burn it, if I were to collect all of the ash that was left behind and all of the gases that are emitted from it, I will hopefully end up with 100 grams again. But a bonfire outside is an open environment. All the gases, the smoke uh, is releasing some of that ash going up into the air. So it's really hard to measure that. But if we use a closed system and I were to burn something and find the mass of it, then I have conservation of mass again, where I cannot, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. So I've just changed the form of my uh, of the wood here from solid, right, carbon, and I burn it and I now have created ash, which is a new substance, which is why it's a chemical change, right? Now, if I were to, let's put the, my notes down, but if I were to look at that again with my, with my ice here, right, and I have now formed some water that is, you know, collected in here, right? Um, so if I were to find the mass of that, and I said I had 100 grams of ice before, and then I take this and I uh, have water in the end and I find the mass of it again, well, I should end up with 100 grams of water because I haven't changed anything here. Now, there may be some that has evaporated, right? But if in an uh, ideal setting, I would be able to keep all of the water vapor that may possibly evaporate and I would still have 100 grams conservation of mass, right? So. Science. science science is pretty cool right and science can also be pretty delicious all right so if i take my my mellow my marshmallow here and let's you know put our marshmallow cover with our chocolate we'll take this apart oh boy right science is pretty awesome right and it can be pretty delicious when we you know use it for you know, chemical changes like mm, Making it delicious some more. Chemical changes. Mmm. Pretty good. You enjoy it. You have a great day. I'm enjoying this.